Hello and welcome to the ninth episode of Digital India Podcast on FIR Podcast Network. This show is weekly updates brought to you by staff and students of Web Marketing Academy and I am your host Mansi. This show gives you the latest updates in the digital marketing world in India. Today is the 4th of August 2015 and we are giving you updates of the last 7 days. Here are the major headlines. The first story is about the minimum purchase price for apps on Google Play reduced in India. The second story is about Delhi High Court telling the government and its departments come out with details of contracts the government has with social media sites. And the third story is about the new Bengaluru top cop and he says basic and not just social media policing need of the hour. And the fourth story and the last one that we have for today is why Inmobi may be India's most innovative company. Those were the headlines and here are the detailed stories for this week. According to the official blog from Google India they're talking about minimum purchase price for apps on Google Play being reduced and that is only for India. Now this is a post by Alistair Pot the product manager at Google Play and it says India continues to be a major growth opportunity for developers to reach new users on Google Play. We've heard feedback from you and that is our global developer community that they're referring to. that you did like more flexibility when choosing how much to charge for your apps and games in India starting today developers can reduce the price of their premium titles and in app product to as low as rupees 10 so when i say rupees 10 it's about 20 us cents you can lower the price of your apps and games right away by visiting the google play developer console and clicking on the pricing and distribution part or the in app products on the left hand side menu we hope this additional lower price tier will allow you to reach more users in india and help you continue to build successful businesses on google play that's what alister pot the product manager at google play has to say about it wow now with these reduced prices i'm hoping that developers have access to the kind of target audience they're looking at and i'm also hoping that there'll be more innovative apps which is going to make my life a lot more easier from india and before we move on to the next story we have an awesome tip coming your way the first tool is called giphy g i p h y .com g i p h y .com what you can do is it is animated gifs we see in facebook and in instagram you see some animated gifs that you can go and browse and and you can download share in all those places so check it out g i p h y and if you want to make a gif or a gif make gif.com and the second story we have for today is from the delhi high court and this has been reported in the economic times it says come out with details of contracts the government has with social media sites the delhi high court asked the center to come out with details of contracts it has with social media sites like facebook and twitter to ascertain whether these websites have licenses to the intellectual property rights of content uploaded come out with all the contracts on the next date a bench of justices considering badar ahmed and sanjeev sachdev said and listed the matter for further hearing on august 19th the matter was listed for august after additional solicitor general that sanjay jain appearing for the center sought more time to submit details of these contracts on the last date of hearing the court had observed that it appears that when anything was uploaded on social media sites the websites got a license to the intellectual property rights that's the ipr of the content without paying any royalty and had asked the center whether it was aware of this the court had also observed that when the government gives royalty free license to facebook without anything in return it was akin to giving state largesse In response the ASG had sought time to place before it the exact nature of contract entered into by the government and its departments with the social media sites the court had also said it was not on whether the terms and conditions of social media sites are right or wrong we are only on whether government has given away the license for the facebook content it had said 
Govind Acharya, in his plea, had contended that government departments like Delhi Police and Indian Railways are not entitled to create accounts on social networking sites. He has also sought recovery of taxes from the websites on their income from operations in India. Wow, that's quite a bit. This is probably one of those first times that, you know, government departments have been asked to have contracts in place, to show contracts that they have a contract. And this is probably the first time we're looking at uh, intellectual property rights, copyright issues coming to the forefront when it comes to social media. We're going to wait for August 19th and see how this case develops. And before we move on to our next story, we have another tip coming your way. My second tool is Google for educators. Google.com slash edu. They have a ton of resources if you're an educator. If you are in teaching or in the, any field of education, you got a lot of material, you got some training videos, you can get certified by Google. So check out Google for educators. The next story we have is from newsunited.com and they are talking about the new Bengaluru top cop and he says basic and not just social media policing is the need of the hour. The appointment of N.S. Megarik as police commissioner of Bengaluru city comes at the right time. The new commissioner has been roped in as an expert at controlling the law and order situation and with the BBMP elections coming up, the city needed an officer who would get down to the basics rather than spend time on social media. Megarik in a media interaction after taking over said that the Bengaluru police were too dependent on social media and had neglected slightly basic policing. The social media is important but I feel that those who lack the knowledge of internet too should be heard. MN Reddy had become a hero on social media, that's our previous commissioner and there had been complaints that he reacted only to complaints posted on the internet. Megarik, however, seeks to change that perception and feels that ground-level policing is more important. The new commissioner says that his challenge for the moment was to ensure a free and fair BBMP election. I have experience in conducting fair and free elections at the Gram Panchayat level and will ensure that the most important elections in the city too go on smoothly, he also said. Wow, as much as we thought that we are moving forward with the use of social media. In fact, we also gave out a story last time which said that the Bengaluru police is going to encourage citizens to start using Periscope to live stream criminal activities. As much as we say we are going forward, it looks like our new commissioner wants to pull us two step backwards. Now, how this is going to go, I'm hoping that, you know, the social media efforts continue and there is no step backwards on that. And yet, at the same time, the ground level policing bit also increases and is up to the mark. All we have to do is wait and watch for that. And before we move on to the next story, we have another tip coming your way. My third tool is builtwith.com. B-U-I-L-T-W-I-T-H.com. Builtwith.com. What you can do is you can go and if you want to check any particular website on what platform it is built, it is like a lookup for websites. So you can put in your website or any website and it will tell you on what platform it is being built. So that's my third tip. Hey, thank you so much for that tip. The next story we have is why Inmobi may be India's most innovative company. Now, this is the cover story on the Economic Times for this week. In four months between April and July 2012, the company's employee base surged from just being 200 to 900. We hired people to be on a massive growth trajectory, recalls 37-year-old Tiwari. That is Naveen Tiwari, the founder of Inmobi. That growth, however, was proving elusive. What prevailed instead was chaos. People were overlapping responsibilities. The 700 new hires had little clue about Inmobi, why they were being brought in and what they have to do. The result? Unrest and inefficiency. In desperation, the company attempted to throw in some system and structures, but... That only further slowed down the lumbering tech startup. We realized we had made a big mistake around managing our people, says Naveen Tiwari. 
Corrective measures duly followed for the past three years, Inmobi has experimented with some very refreshing counterintuitive and even bizarre people policies to recruit, retain, engage and reward its employees. The next title they have is about the no attendance issues. Now, Facebook is known not to track employee absences. John Sullivan, a professor of management and consultant at San Francisco State University, in a recent presentation titled People Management Practices for Google, Facebook and Apple, said the key lesson to learn from is that if you focus on measure and reward performance, you won't have attendance issues at all. Wow, I'm hoping that anybody who's running a company is listening to this. Inmobi isn't there yet, but it has got its own variant of this Facebook policy. Employees don't need their supervisor's approval for up to six days of leave. And there's more. Everybody gets a 100% bonus, except of course the sales team, which could get more or less depending on the performance. And performance appraisal systems have gone way out of the window. There is no international travel expense policy. Inmobi employees travel and spend as they please. If a new Inmobi recruit quits within a month, he gets a quitting bonus of three months salary to go. Everybody at Inmobi gets 800 US dollars annually as a learning wallet, which they can utilize to do just about anything. I mean, cooking classes, you mean scuba diving classes, learning a new language or simply mastering new technologies. Also, everybody gets a 200 US dollars every year to change their handsets. Wow. So if you're in the mobile advertising industry, obviously you would need a change in that handsets and Inmobi seems to be funding people for that. When any Inmobians, as the staff is called, want to quit and start a new venture, the company does everything they possibly can to support them. So instead of taking away their access cards when they quit, Inmobi is happy offering them free office space, allowing them to intermingle, brainstorm with their ex-colleagues and even eat the free food that a well-equipped cafeteria serves round the clock. According to a March 2015 eMarketer report, mobile ad spend is expected to grow from 19.2 billion, that's 16% of digital ad spend and 3.7% of the total media ad spend in 2013 to 101.4 billion in 2016. That's 51% of the digital ad spend and 16.5% of the total media ad spend. While Google is king in capturing both digital ad spend and mobile ad spend, digitally it is 31.45%, that's in 2014, and mobile-wise it is 50%. It is increasingly seeing tough competition in the mobile space. Facebook is playing catch-up rapidly with mobile ads counting for almost 3 billion US dollars for its 2015 second quarter revenues of the 4 billion US dollars, an all-time high. That's because Facebook users are spending more and more time on their smartphones. Facebook's mobile ad spend surged from 5.4% in 2012 to 22.3% in 2014, according to eMarketeer. To be sure, in the past two years, there has been significant consolidation in the ad tech industry. In 2013, Twitter acquired Mopub, a startup that helps mobile publishers manage their ad inventory for a whopping 350 million US dollars. A year later, Facebook acquired Live Rail, a video ad startup for 500 million US dollars. Yahoo acquired Bright Roll, another video ad firm for 640 million US dollars. And Google acquired Adometry, a marketing attribution company for an undisclosed amount. Mobile ad spend is expected to grow from 19.2 billion US dollars in 2013 to 101.4 billion US dollars by 2016. Unsurprisingly, in March this year, the grapevine crackled that Google would acquire Inmobi at a valuation upwards of 2 billion US dollars. However, Inmobi dismissed the rumor and now seems keen to instead go head on with the global giants. And its people are visibly the centerpiece of its innovation gambit. Since this is a new show, it would be of great help if you could share your ratings and reviews. Please give us your feedback. Leave the comments in the comments section. And by the way, we have an interesting discussion coming up in our studio. And this is mostly for all those business travelers who have been wanting to visit India and have it scheduled to visit India in the next coming months.
Thank you, Mansi. Before we move into the discussion, I want to share some interesting numbers from the Economic Times. Inmobi claims to be the world's largest independent mobile advertising platform. Number one, it served 2.2 trillion ad requests in 2014. Number two, it got 220 million dollars in funding so far. Number three, its open door policy welcomes failed entrepreneurs. About 40 plus startups have been so far set up by ex Inmobians. Number four, it allows ex staff who quit to start up to operate out of their office. An example, they provide the office space, they give brainstorming session and then free space and additional benefits for those who are ex staff. One of the example that they speak about is Inmobi's chief revenue officer, Atul Satija. She actually quit to set up a startup, but she operates out of InMobi office. So number five, they have a program called Live Your Potential program, which gives them the option to switch the roles if they want to. If somebody wants to move from their existing role to a new role, this program allows them to do it. Number six, they hire new people and then they connect with the leaders, groom them for nine months and make them as a leader. These are some of the stats from the Economic Times about InMobi. Thank you. We have in our studio Suresh Babu, the CEO and founder of Web Marketing Academy. Welcome, Suresh. Hi, hi, hi. Thank you. And we also have with us a faculty at WMA, Monica. Welcome to the show, Monica. Thank you. Hi. So today we're going to discuss about all those things that people should keep in mind if they're going to be business travelers in India. Of course, this is for everybody who wants to travel to India. So here is a checklist that we've prepared for all those people. Let's let's start off uh, with the checklist here. The first thing is always have a copy of your passport and visa handy, a copy of it. If not the originals, always have a copy. And if you have the originals and you're traveling with it, please be careful about it. Okay. And the second one is be aware of internet speeds. They might not be the best all the time. I already have eyebrows raising from both the ends here. Yes, Suresh. Before we get into that, the reason that we want to have this is I faced a lot of problems when I go and speak, for example, in Delhi or Mumbai. There are certain things for a speaker and especially I know a lot of our listeners are either business travelers or they are presenters, communicators. So I thought, you know, it would be nice to come up with this list of things. Yes, you said the basics, the passport, and I think the internet is something that you can't expect. The speed of the internet is one of the thing and carrying a local cell phone and it's easy to get a SIM card. And we'll have to keep in mind, if we get a phone from other country, it is not compatible here in India. We need to buy both a SIM card and a handset. A simple handset can cost around $30. A SIM card, we will be able to get it. Anybody, the hotel can arrange or even the cab driver can, can arrange for a SIM card. So make sure that you get those SIM card and use the internet and the phone. And when you're speaking, there will be a lot of audio, video, AV challenges. Sometimes the Mac, it won't be compatible, the system that they have in uh, some events and uh, Wi-Fi there will, not, will be a problem. What else? Microphone. I've seen microphone, you won't be able to get a caller microphone or if it is there, it might not work. So all these simple things, but it will make a huge difference. And I still have a lot of list. Monica. Yeah, I think before you were checking for the microphones, I'd say just account for the traffic. Yes. That is very important because the traffic in India is crazy. I mean, it, it's maddening even for us. So for you, it may be a, you know, a life changing experience maybe, <laughs> but uh, account for the traffic, both for time, account for the climate. You may, because it's yes. not always going to be an AC climate. Uh, right. air conditioned it's not always going to be there and then uh, try to reach a little early wherever you need to be so that you can you know it's not always going to be like as you said everything will not be set up Correct. and you may face AV issues as well so keep some time for that so it's it's good to reach about an hour earlier I would say yeah. to make sure that all these things are set up Correct. 
Yeah, and uh, talking about time, we jokingly say Indian standard time. That means, yes. you know, you expect delays. It could be in the meetings too. We are not used to because we might blame it for traffic, but, you know, that's the culture. We are not time conscious. When somebody says, we'll be there in 10 minutes, you expect at least half an hour or one hour. That is the standard. People are a little bit laid back. They don't think that time is important for a conference, maybe a speech is happening they might walk in in between a little bit late and um, expect a lot of noise from the traffic so while traveling also you expect lots of horns and pollution and then on the streets you will see beggars what do you think about that one yeah so th- those are things which you cannot escape from right. whether you go to a big city or a small city uh, poverty on india streets is something you have to see you like it you don't like it right. so it's just like be prepared for that because uh, a lot of our people are not in a good condition and that right. is a truth which we can't hide right. from anyone so be prepared for that but also be careful because there are also lots of rings of beggars so mm-hmm. where they see people from outside especially if you are right. a foreigner yeah. so in that case they will especially come and try to you know get you to give them some money out of sympathy and all but actually they are rings so right. just don't go overboard in the sympathy Correct. it's all right i mean there are genuine things but you will also come across fake things the similar things apply even for taxis and autos they may please try to fleece you so wherever possible if you see state run stops so you have karnataka state transport ki right. rt c so if you get your uh, transport from there rather than just going into any random taxi or auto so that will also save you a lot of money and you'll get where you need to be quickly traffic rules is completely different it's not what are traffic rules we have traffic rules <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, you'll be surprised to see there is no stop signs in other countries there are stop signs in each one in a four way junction there is no stop sign and you will have to use your judgment and be prepared for it and don't be scared yeah. don't be scared and remember to honk honk yes. is the best part that you have in india yeah, yeah. <laughs> when i travel to other places one of the challenges i see is in the hotels even in a five star hotel you might not get an iron laundry oh, and yes. iron i make sure that i always try to take a handy iron with me because you never get it and even if you try to get the laundry done it might take one day yeah <laughs> that's an important thing like you may get the same things but the time <laughs> expectation is going to be very different here right See so if you're here for business understand the audience you're addressing because their backgrounds are different the culture and qualification uh, they come from is very different they it's going to make them as very different individuals even though they're in the same business and doing the mm-hmm. same thing there will be cross cultural differences so you'll have to keep that in mind and when i say cross cultural differences yes i also want to talk about language and uh, language is going to be a huge issue if you're looking at tier 2 and tier 3 cities so it's always good to have somebody who's uh, from the local place because they know the language very well also this is regarding one hell of google maps they <laughs> might not be the same yes. and accurate all the time so ask for direction open your mouth and ask trust me indians are uh, really friendly when you ask for direction they will go out of the way to actually even drop you till that place Yes. So that's something that I can assure you that you know but but ask for directions please. Google Maps are always not the handiest of the things in India. Yeah. Before the session we were talking about people staring. I mean it's Oh yes, common. the great Indian curiosity stare. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that yes, is Monica, that is something. Yes. Something. So um yeah, you just get used to it. <laughs> I have nothing else to say because that happens and uh, foreigners are always uh, an object of curiosity <laughs> you will have people asking you strange questions also sometimes because they almost think like you're a, like an alien not on <laughs> india or something like that i mean it's not so bad it's a lot better now but yeah you can expect that and it's not always rude i mean sometimes of course it will be rude but it's not always with that intent right yeah. it's, it's just, just curiosity sort of, yeah it's yeah. just sort of curiosity wanting to understand where yeah. you come you from may, you may find in fact that if you actually start talking to them then you get to know the reason also and you and i've i've actually met a lot of people who come here mm-hmm. and in the initial thing they have really taken you know put off with a lot of things but the, at the end of it they really come to like yes and people here and they make friends when somebody talks people are really good here i mean they are helpful 
Sometimes there might be too much of helpfulness. Yes, so the question forward. of space, right? Yes. So yeah, cool. space. We were talking about it too. Expect people surrounding you and with a lot of crowd. I mean, yeah. you go in a bus or public transportation. I mean, there will be a lot of people who will be too close, yeah. not giving your personal space. That is something. Always foreigners, anywhere you go, you have to pay extra. Have yeah. you seen that? For localites, it's a different thing. It's bad, but... Somehow that is how it works. They have to pay extra. That's the reason why, I mean, you know, it's always good to hang around. Even if you don't know a local person there, make friends and go through them. Yeah. And that's when, you know, <laughs> it's the same yeah. everywhere. Otherwise, yes, it is. So it's many of the hotels now, they give a local guide. Yes. So that guy will actually help them both from transport to actually where they should eat. Because the food here is spicy. Now you do get uh, your kind of cuisine if you ask for it. Correct. So one thing is ask. Yes. At least ask. Please don't just like if you say chef's choice and you just go there, the chef's choice might be very a big shock to your stomach. Correct. So you should ask because by default we love spice. Yes. Sometimes you can tell the the hotel guys will arrange for a guide for you and he will be with you through. Uh, the driver could be your guide. Yes. Will come in handy. Auto rickshaw guy would be a good resource. But again, sometimes they might get too friendly. It's part of it, but. Be wary about. It's, it's a part of Indian culture to treat you as family. You could be a foreigner to India, but then if you go around the uh, same auto uh, with the same auto guy for some time, he will treat you like a family member. He will ensure that you're very comfortable and all that. But yes, in some cases, yeah, no, especially if they are from outside, they kind of know that these guys are not familiar Correct. with the places here. They actually do go out of the way and help. Yes. It's actually the Indians who suffer more <laughs> in this regard. <laughs> we were also talking about food and restaurants. Do you want to talk about restroom availability? Yeah, oh, so they are not available. <laughs> That's the first thing. <laughs> restroom availability. <laughs> That's always a challenge. Even while traveling from one place to another place, there's no restaurants. You there have no to find a hotel. And even if you find a hotel, expect... Filled. Yes. There... <laughs> It's always a good idea to carry a toilet paper with you. Yes, absolutely. Always. Yes. Yeah, and the sanitizer. And, yeah, uh, and we have a concept called the Indian toilet. You can just Google on that. Right. <laughs> yes. I went to a hospital here in Bangalore. Uh, I see some foreigners, but they've allocated somebody who can take care of their entire thing. Even though maybe they have to pay more, but they've allocated one person who can take that patient around. It was quite interesting to see that. You might get special treatment, you have to ask for it. And emergency services are not yes. really emergency services yes. here. No, uh, nine one probably a uh, hundred other people will reach there before the one you call. <laughs> so police, <laughs> hospital... It's just good for you to know where some places are or you know the best thing is actually go with your guide. That guy will take you where you need to go get people for you. But if you just rely on a number like a 999 kind of thing that is not going to work here. It just won't work. Expect delays if there is an emergency you cannot rely completely on the public even it could be transportation. And if you have to go get bring along somebody who understands the local language who can talk for you. Yes. Don't go yourself. Yes. There's a lot of difference between Mac and Windows users and both for iPhone and Android users. So there's a huge difference. Be prepared for that. You try to get an extension or a USB compatibility things would be there. Power? Yes. <laughs> Outages, yes. The power will, is, has a mind of its own. So you just kind of have to go with it. So if you're lucky, you'll be at a, at a hotel where, which will have backup. So you may not face it as much, but some kind of like iron, the iron won't work on that right. kind of backup. So you have to be aware of that. Most places will, would have backup today. I mean, all right. two star, three star also have backup today. But yes, sometimes you're going somewhere and that place could have a outage at that time. Yes. So those things happen. I had my boss my previous job she is from the netherlands but headquartered in uh, california we see a lot of people come here and be here for four months or five months and work here you need to understand a little bit about how we work we take our own time so she was asking me how can people just hang out in the break and 10 minutes break is like it goes maybe one hour they just talk and then but the thing is there's no time i mean 8 to 5 means it's not 8 to 5. 
they might finish up the work even if it takes 10 o'clock they might finish up but they will take their own sweet time and you know hang out with their friends they just lay back and meetings also if you have a meetings you might expect some late attendance or maybe people will walk in and walk out so it is not exactly how it works in other countries make sure that you understand that i come from an it background so i would say that there still you know the punctuality aspect is not so bad mm-hmm. but i have also gone to other places after that and yes it's true that it it varies it will not always be Correct. so bad you may see better conditions as well but yeah you have to it certain flexibility of time is something what most of the people here They'd would expect. go with they would expect that you know 10 minutes 15 minutes is fairly cool if you yes. would be the kind who really wants to start on the dot that may not always work but at the same time there have also been cases where the doors are closed at certain times and then people come right. so i wouldn't say that it's always the case but yeah it could be yes we were talking about what to wear well i mean just just wear comfortable uh, clothes and uh, if you're out to see the city if you have a lot of walking to do and you're on the streets and all that stuff it's always good to be you know uh, be a roman when you're in rome so it's right. always be an indian when you're in india so uh, pick up some comfortable dressing and some comfortable clothing from the local stores here yes and and, and another reason for that is because Uh, we have an insect infested kind of evening uh, in india across the country so you have mosquitoes yes. so it's good to stay protected and apart from that be careful about the water uh, wherever possible if you can get the bottled water just use that it's is better to use that if you're here for a day or or two three days or whatever don't take the risk Correct. it's not worth yeah. the risk just be careful with the things you are eating street food and all even if you're adventurous try to go into a proper place and have it rather than just randomly on the street yes so just be careful otherwise i think you would have a wonderful time in india because it's so diverse it's so colorful right. that people are actually it just hits them but gradually one one day two day three day and after that they really yes, start getting right. into it yeah and uh, also when they say formals formals means you know maybe you need to know what is formal means uh, in india the yeah. sari is formal i mean it may not be formal as you think formal but right. but yeah and it's pretty cool i think yeah. formal as in uh, a dress or uh, pants and trousers are fairly what a lot of indians in the professional world wear anyway so it's i don't think there would be a big problem it's only when you go out correct and if you are touring you should wear something you know like the indian stare should not change into something more right so so just be careful about that that's that's pretty much because of different weather and not expect a lot of heat and dust uh, yes dust and contrast to that you know cold so it's a different place north and south it's got different weathers know your weather accordingly yeah be prepared and it. and the thing is see even from north india to south india people will have challenges even right. though we are all indians but we have a lot of diverse culture language everything changes hmm. so even as indians sometimes we face challenges but the core thing across india is that people to people communication really works well right. you will always find people who are willing to help you Yes. but perhaps sometimes you have to ask because some things are different you Correct. just have to get used to you know that i'll get it but i need to ask i need to be a little more outgoing i need to reach out to people and then yeah. they do help it's not that they don't help yeah. and uh, be prepared there are people who might want to take pictures with you right yeah yes <laughs> right everywhere you go you expect people come and t- uh, take pictures now it is selfie but yeah Yes. you probably have to take other people's pictures also <laughs> <laughs> yeah and print outs you know that's always a challenge right i face a lot of times it's always good to have an id and uh, other paperwork so you might not find a printer so you might need to find an internet cafe which we call here you just pay for uh, for an hour and you browse the internet and have some print outs scanning done that also reminds me carry cash yeah change indian rupees yes and change change because a lot of things will be the 10 yeah. rupee 5 rupee thing you don't want to hand out a 500 note 500 uh, rupees, correct yeah. so have some 10 rupees denominations 10s 20s 50s and 100 tips for a waiter or for example in the us and other places you have like 10% to tip or 15% here it's it's not like that but tips are acceptable So but still because if you want to give it's fine but there is no as rule rule right um as such on how much if you like the food go ahead yes shopping oh yes shopping. shop a lot you can shopping. go mad with the shopping 
just shop shop your heart out yes but be careful we are all indians are bargain bargaining, bargaining people yes. so be sure that you bargain yes and the local guide will get bargain on yeah. your behalf yeah 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 it's it's a good uh, it's a good time for you to disappear when you're buying so they don't see who is buying because that makes a lot of difference in how much they'll be willing to bargain if they see it's you right and you're a foreigner yes. then they'll think oh she's anyway got lots of dollars no need yes anything else all yes. right good so yes if you're listening to us then these are the worst case scenarios that we have actually listed down well india is an awesome colorful diverse place and trust us you will just enjoy india simply because of the kind of culture that we have the kind of people that we are we're so helpful you will just love it out here so just like any other country where you should be wary of a lot of things india is also one such country yes it is definitely a developing nation you will get to see a lot of development also happening yes yes so please do come to india visit us uh, if you've already visited india just let us know your experience of how it has been and we would love to share it with our audience you know i've been thinking about it we are what show is this nine FAR 9 yes 9 okay. podcast we don't know how it is going so it would be really nice if you all can let us know if the format is good or maybe we have to change a little bit what do you like and what do you don't like about format we can fine tune it and uh, now i am asking to them right please give us something tell what do you think it could be just a simple email or a comment or uh, audio uh, so that you know we will make sure that we give value for those listeners so that's my take thank you yeah awesome thank you so much suresh and monica for coming to the studio and sharing your experiences of traveling in india please give us your feedback for those of you who are listening to us and have something to say you can leave a comment in the comment section below and you could get in touch with us on s u r e s h that suresh at webmarketingacademy.in I hope you've enjoyed this weekly updates and now that we are done with this recording I'm going to hand over the piece to Bharani the editor of all the podcasts that go out from Web Marketing Academy I'm really amazed at the kind of patience he has while he's editing our podcast considering the runs and the reruns and the retakes that we take <laughs> He is our editor, and if you have anything to say about the editing, then do mark an email to us, and Bharni is happy to revert to you on that. Catch you all same time next week. Until then, this is Mansi signing off with a bye bye.